I'm just going to talk through one of our projects. It was um, in Bath and North East Somerset Council and um, it was a proposal for a house associated with a loose-knit settlement, not a defined settlement, but a loose-knit clustering of housing. But our site was interesting in that there was a belt of trees that ran down one side of the site and it, it meant that visually our site was, you, you couldn't read visually, spatially, um, our house with this loose-knit settlement. You read it more in association with agricultural buildings in the wider landscape. But in plan, it associated itself with the settlement. So we had been pursuing this project as a paragraph 55 submission. It was in an area of outstanding natural beauty uh, and uh, Braintree hadn't happened so it was regarded as an isolated location, so it needed to, to meet paragraph 55. Um, we went to a design review panel, got full support from the design review panel, um, and were refused by the local authority. We went to appeal, and we argued that the, the proposals were relating, were sensitive to the defining character of the, of the area in that wider sense although you know, it didn't respond to the material and, and you know, the, 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 the way other houses were built in that little loose settlement because visually you couldn't see the two together. So, so because of the Braintree case, what happened in this case was we, we weren't in a defined settlement. Um, we were close to that settlement. And because we were close to that settlement, it was actually deemed that paragraph 79 wouldn't apply so it was submitted under paragraph 55 but in the time it was in the in an application the context changed and Braintree happened and all of a sudden now we've got paragraph 79 and because of the Braintree case our site was regarded as not isolated and therefore because paragraph 79 didn't apply paragraph 131 of the MPPF was applied which is a, another design-led piece of policy and it's like a paragraph 79 light it's got fewer of the tests of paragraph 79e in there but it does say that in determining applications great weight should be given to outstanding or innovative designs which promote high levels of sustainability or help raise the standard of design more generally in an area. And then importantly, the last sentence says, so long as they fit in with the overall form and layout of their surroundings. Now, that's a new little test in there. You notice paragraph 131 doesn't have sensitive to defining character. It doesn't have significantly enhanced immediate setting, but it instead it says fit in with the overall form and layout of their surroundings. And in this case, we couldn't argue that our scheme was really fitting in with the overall form and layout of the surroundings, obviously because our architectural narrative had worked with this tree belt and the, the difference between a physical association in plan and a spatial relationship and association. And it's a good case study, I think, uh, for, for showing why the context of being on the edge of a settlement and fitting in with the overall form and layout of the surroundings is an important consideration. Um, what we've done on schemes subsequent to that decision is just bear paragraph 131 in mind on all schemes, regardless of paragraph 79, um, because it's not specifically a piece of policy uh, for uh, non-isolated locations it's a general piece of design policy and it seems to make good it's good sense to to use this um, on any scheme so if there are buildings around in an area it, it's worth um, fitting in with the overall form and layout of the surroundings in one way there's a scheme we did in um, dover district last year which we got planning consent for and it was in a situation where there were other buildings around. It was submitted under paragraph 79. It was granted consent by
by Dover District Council under paragraph 79. It had full backing from design review panel. Um, but I think one could say that if we had submitted it as a paragraph 131, that perhaps we didn't need to meet the higher bar of paragraph 79. But um, anyway, in this case, it's clear that the scheme was designed to fit in with the overall form and layout of the surroundings. So we were comfortable that um, we would have met both the higher bar of paragraph 79, as endorsed by design review panel, but we'd also have met the bar, the lower bar of paragraph 131. So hopefully that gives a little bit of context to the principle of isolation. Could talk about that for longer, but uh, if you've got any other queries or questions about isolation uh, or paragraph 79, give us a call. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.